Most everything, I guess, has been said, but why the Trojan horse? The topic today, really, Industry 4.0. So, yeah, 3D printing is not the solution to everything that we heard. The panel was incredible explaining what the challenges are out there. But 3D printing does have something in its corner. 3D printing is the first truly digital native technology out there for construction. So, essentially, we're looking at the building as a product. And it sounds funny, but every other construction technology we've seen in the past focuses heavily on one aspect, improving that. So later Crete, we're a material company. Our development is focused on improving the materials we make. 3D printing says, well, we got to change that. We have to look at the whole picture. So is it disruptive to the point we just heard? Right now, the answer is no, it's, it's not. Uh, but a lot of what we heard today is about a curve that's accelerating. So that curve is accelerating because we're digitalizing what's out there. So, oh. yeah. so essentially, what we've done so far is we took a really cool old car, we painted it. So you, you hear the analogy a lot here today with everything with automotive. The big use of 3D printing is automotive for prototyping, building one-off structures. One-off houses is a big prototype. Again, someone has to live in it, so it's a challenge when somebody has to live in a structure that could collapse. And way, how do we know that it's not going to collapse? We do the same thing we just did. You already have done it. It's proven. So we say this is an alternative method and means. It's the same thing. We just did it with a 3D printer. And the 3D printer is just an XYZ plotter saying this is where we deposit the material. The difference is coming in the future. And this is why it's so cool that it's digitized. Is, is the idea of constructability. So we ask from a very early stage in the development process, how are we going to build the thing? So the thing, again, being a house, a structure, a, a building of some sort, you look at it, and so here you see a picture of people cutting to make fittings on site. So the big so what of 3D printing is the as built is the design. So essentially you're getting exactly what it should be, and when you're going on site, combine it with uh, prefabrication, combine it with other things, and suddenly your construction is completely accelerated. But because it's also digitized, it, right now th there's a myriad of variables. In the panel we heard 50 variables of why construction is inefficient. But we rarely look at the picture from, from the holistic perspective. So 3D printing, again, is just a concept, completely right, what we just heard from Werner. It's a shell of a building. This is essentially what we've printed so far. Um, Enrico Dini, he calls it a 2 plus D or 2.5 D. So we haven't completely printed a 3D building and produced a complete finished product, but we've produced shells that are exactly design meets as built. The big so what though of 3D printing, as Tal uh, was envisioning as well, there's a field out there that complexity is now essentially free. So th there already exists today a market of custom uh, homes, custom structures, where people are paying a premium. Uh, Tal, I, I forget the figure he had, maybe 2% of these buildings are complex, but people are paying a premium and paying well in excess. So if you can 3D print it, get exactly what you want, the design matches it, suddenly you have a cost-effective model of something that's worthwhile to look into. So where are we at today, as uh, Professor Feldman, Rosenfeld does it, uh, we have a prototype. It's a, a very expensive prototype. It's something out there. This is what we just completed, the, it, the shell of the house in, in Dubai. Uh, this is with Imar, the largest developer in the Gulf, uh, builders of the Burj Khalifa. But uh, unfortunately, we're not allowed to share the uh, job site photos. It's in finishing right now. The project was completed back in November. But um, so this is where it's at, but the prototype Again, it's, it's illustrating what we can do with the technology. It's proving it works. It, we're extruding mortar um, to build a perfect shell that's exactly as the as-built. And uh, actually, I'm ahead of time. I went through it kind of quick. So more time for questions, maybe. All right. All right, Matthew. Can you hear me? Yeah, now you can hear me. So uh, a quick uh, tell me about uh, Laticrete, uh, and then I'll ask you some more questions, please. Sure. So uh, Laticrete, we're a global manufacturer of mostly flooring installation materials. 
One of those, the main component, or even the name, uh, Laticrete, is latex plus concrete. So our expertise is in cement rheology, making cement uh, mortars do uh, flow in special ways. So one of those is uh, the application of 3D printing. Yeah. So uh, you talked about uh, the Dubai uh, 3D challenge. How realistic is it? So yeah, the re realistic component. So 3D printing is solving different um, problems in different markets. In Europe, it's going to be much more focused on safety, on productivity, reducing the, the carrying cost uh, of a project. In Dubai, right now, the vision, again, it's a prototype. So is it scalable? Very much so. Uh, we built the prototype. It's, it's there. It, Dubai is avant-garde, so they're opening the market towards the development component. Uh, and uh, by allowing us to be on site, by allowing us to do this, the value-add attributes of 3D printing will be developed because of these prototypes. So right now, it's just, again, recreating the conventional. But next phase, there's going to be other changes coming in. So the uh, design will be less material because we'll be allowed to have uh, geometric shapes that you don't need a complete form fill. Or there'll be sound uh, attenuation because of the print design itself will absorb the sound. So these future characteristics that are coming are because of the prototype. And Dubai is being the, the proving ground is allowing for that. How will it change the, the industry in your, uh, in your uh, perspective? So the, really, the, this is why I called the, pro, uh, the question, how do 3D printing change the industry overall? Uh, this is really the catalyst of why I called it the Trojan horse of construction. It, being digitally native, it asks the question of how we're going to construct and build the building from an early, early, uh, early stage. So in that pre-design, we're already starting to talk about how we're going to build the building. And this is really what 3D printing uh, is going to prove out. And it's proving that because we have to say it's cost effective against conventional. So if it's cost effective or cost, uh, uh, against conventional, we have to know exactly what is the complete picture of the conventional. And really, that's only the big contracting groups that know the answer to that. What do you think uh, prevents uh, 3D printing from uh, reaching mainstream construction? Right. So I like the question a lot, um, whoever came up with it. Is, uh, so mainstream, I, I first would argue 3D printing technology in general in any industry is not mainstream. So where, the question I would really prefer is more something along the lines of where is 3D printing applicable to construction? Uh, so you, you see 3D printing with uh, automotive is prototypes. You see it with prosthetics, it's one-off designs. So With toys, also prototypes, right? Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So as we bring 3D printing into construction, it's how does it work with the digital fabricated other components? How do other robots work with a perfect, again, the as-built matching the design? How do these things work together? This is really the vision, and that's what's changing. And, and uh, I'm, I'm sure there are challenges uh, uh, to make it mainstream. How close are we to, to uh, solve these uh, challenges? So how close are we to solving the challenges? Again, so Werner mentioned code. Uh, code and proving off a one-off prototype is a massive, massive challenge. Um, you have Vinci here with uh, has X3, which is focused heavily on, on um, more aesthetically pleasing or facade panels or something that's um, non-structural, this is more likely the near term. Uh, long term, as far as getting it mass produced, we can do it, but uh, it's still a couple years off for sure. Uh, we talked with, uh, with the last panel about Israel. What brings you to Israel apart from Contec? So Contec is definitely the, one of the main drivers, uh, I think, the idea of ecosystem, what Sakhi has put together here, is amazing. Uh, seeing the high, high concentration, but looking in the room, there's Ali in the back, and Nadav. So there's a lot of startups here uh, working to really promote uh, construction technology. And um, it's definitely, a, 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 the cluster is just growing organically by itself. All right, Matthew, thank you so much.